Hello lovely people, I'm Kathrian and welcome to my channel. Um, this video is in the series Slow Stitches where I share some of my favourite stitches that I use in my slow stitching projects and um, this time I want to share with you the eyelet stitch and the many different ways that I use it. Um, in its most basic form it's done on uh, the flat surface of the cloth and it's literally just stitching a little circle and there's no hole or eyelet or anything, it's just some radiating stitches that make this little circle. Um, so that's that one. Um, on this cloth, which I showed in this week's slow stitch, this is a, a bit of old duster that was shared with me by a, a student of mine. Um, there were holes in it already. You can see my finger through there. Um, and I've stitched around the hole. So it's exactly the same as, as this, except for the fact that there's a hole. And there were holes in this cloth, but obviously you can also fake it by making holes. So I wanted to show you that way. Um, another way of doing it is to make a hole and then behind the hole put a different coloured piece of cloth. And here is the, the sort of basic one using just the radiating stitches out. Um, in this one I've used little cross stitches around the edge. Um, in this one I've done blanket stitch around the edge. And in this one I've done teeny tiny running stitches inside on the actual piece of coloured cloth inside and then more teeny tiny running stitches around the outside. Um, and in this one I just did little crosses sort of all over it. So you can really play with the principle of making a hole and putting, um, or just making a hole, or making a hole and putting another colour underneath and then, you know, what you do round the edge can, can be variable. Um, <clears throat> another way of doing it, because all those holes are roundish, none of them are perfect rounds. If you want to do perfect rounds, obviously you could draw around something or use a circle template or something and, and cut out perfect holes. Perfect holes. This little cloth has been on the go for a long time. Um, in fact, these were cloths that I eco-printed the very first time I did an in-person workshop with um, an artist called Caroline Bell. And then we went back in the winter and had a couple of days stitching. And there you see I've used eyelet stitches in among the seed stitch, but this was something that um, she uses a lot. And this is eyelet stitch. It's just that you cut these sort of organic shaped holes that you kind of interlock. And then you need to leave sort of a good quarter to half inch of fabric framework in between and then you overcast stitch all around the edges so you get this beautiful I mean it's very very time consuming I'm not going to do it here but the basic principle of stitching around a hole that's all it is it's just that the shape of the holes have changed and um, I think I cut I don't think I cut all the holes, I think I cut maybe one or two holes and stitched and then cut a couple more holes and stitched and so on. And then you get this, this beautiful effect. It's, like I say, it's really, really slow, slow stitching, um, but it's really cool. It's a really lovely effect. How many times can I say effect in one video? Um, okay, so I should put all that to one side. So if you want to look at it more, you can pause your screen and, you know, do all that. Um, and get my sample, which I've now buried somewhere under. Where have I put it? Where have I put it? I had a little sample all, um, all sorted out. Uh, talk amongst you. Oh, here it is. Found it. Found it. Panic over. Oops. So I've got this little piece, which I have done various bits and bobs on through these videos. And um, so I thought I'd start by just doing um, an eyelet stitch just on the surface of the cloth without a hole, for starters. So just pick somewhere, come through from the back. Now, again, if you want to draw a tiny little circle, Fred Fred hair, um, a tiny little circle on the cloth to mark your, you know, where your, where your imaginary hole is going to be, then you go for it. I just kind of see it in my mind's eye because I don't want it necessarily to be perfectly even. And then I go in and then I come up again. So I'm imagining my hole is here on the cloth. Um, now I don't do all the 
stitches straight away all side by side because I find that that doesn't really help with the tension. So I go round in a kind of radiating manner and as if you're making a little, you know when children draw suns, they draw a circle and then they draw the rays coming off. It's, it's like that. And my radiating stitches, I like the more different lengths, so I don't worry about that. I'm just turning as I work. So I'm going in and then I'm coming back out on the edge of my imaginary circle. So then I'm radiating out and coming back in. I've got you as close as I can, so hopefully you can see really well. I, on the other hand, can't see very well at all. <laughs> I'm kind of peering underneath my, my light and my camera stand. But anyway, I'll manage. I'll manage. Um, so I'm just making a little sun shape. A little child's sun. And then once I've done that, and I'm back around to the beginning, <clears throat> So I've kind of made the shape there. Then I just go back round and fill in. And you could absolutely leave it like that, you know, if you were happy with that. But I then like to go in between my stitches and put in another stitch. And those two stitches, get out the way thread, are a similar size. So with this one I'll probably just deliberately make it a bit longer. Like that. Come back up between the next two. And then uh, my next stitch is coming in here, so I'll go slightly bigger again and come back in there. And then I might go around two, three, four, you know, however many times it takes till I like the effect. If you want it absolutely solid, solid stitching, then you might have to go three or four times around. But I find it's much better to do it this and keep going round and round than try to get all the stitches really close together the first time. <clears throat> and it helps with the tension. I mean, this is quite sturdy cloth, but if you had finer cloth, I should have said, by the way, I'm on two layers. I always like to stitch on two layers and I don't use a hoop. Um, that's just me. You can absolutely do it in a hoop. You can absolutely do it with one layer. If you do it in a hoop, you'll go through, pull it to the back and then come back up, you know, in two movements instead of one. Um, if you do it on one layer, I would choose a sturdy cloth, really, because you're putting quite a lot of tension on a... Um, well, this is okay, but when you start making the holes, the holeless ones manage on a thinner cloth. But So now I'm literally just going to go back round again in the, in the new... <coughs> excuse me, in the new spaces. And just varying the stitch length as I go. I'm trying to keep... I've got a very bad habit, well it's a habit, of putting my thumb over what I've just stitched, which is fine when I'm doing it on my own, but not when I want you to see what I'm doing. So there again, you see, I'm now back to the beginning and I'm filling in again. I've got, Also, I've got two strands of embroidery floss, which is my... kind of what I use mostly, but if you wanted to use a pearl cotton or, you know, a thicker, a thicker embroidery silk or more strands, um, <clears throat> it would certainly then fill it, fill up quicker, but I just my two strands is my is my habit, and there goes the thumb creeping in again. Apologies. And it's very relaxing to do. Um, just going round and round in a circle, you don't get dizzy at all, or I don't. And then. When you're getting towards maybe your final round, you find maybe that you, you don't have as many gaps. You don't have every other place a gap. So just look and is there, can I squeeze another stitch in there? Yes, I think I can. And you could even, on if it's your la if you think it's your last round more or less, like here I've got quite a big gap, I might say, well, I don't want to have to come round again just to fill that gap in. So I'm going to put two stitches in that gap instead of one. Thumbs there again, I'm sorry. Does take quite a lot of thread, obviously, because it's so dense. I always do that smoosh because then it really makes the stitches sink into the cloth. But I'll try and get my thumb back once I've smooshed. I'll try and remember. <coughs> uh, nearly there. 
Oops, that's not helpful, is it? More Fred Fred hair. A little monkey. Fred Fred's my cat, if you don't know. Actually, I do need to come round again because I've still got gaps, I see. If I'm going to be really pernickety about it. Thumbs there again. <laughs> habits, eh? Habits. And, <clears throat> and since I started this channel, I've become aware of habits that I didn't even know I had. Or, you know, mannerisms or ways of doing things. I did not know and that I, when I pull my thread through, with my little finger do that. I didn't know until I saw myself doing it on a video. Because you don't, do you, necessarily? In fact, in some ways, it's been very helpful for me to, to see myself. I mean, I, I don't sit watching myself for hours endlessly, but obviously when I'm editing, I have to watch to know what's worthy of leaving in and what should be removed. So I'm just going round and round because apparently I can't just leave it and say you get the idea. <laughs> you can sort of audition, does that stitch fit in there? Yes, it does. I want to make it slightly longer, I think. And I'm going to jump right over because all those, that's all filled in. And obviously you can make them as big or as small as you like the stitches and the and the space. You can do big big eyelets and little eyelets. I feel like I need to squeeze another one in there. But because you're thinking about filling space with the thread, it is very meditative, I think. And absorbing. Right, I'm just gonna fill in these last two little spaces and I want to call it done. But that was a, quite a long length of thread and it's down to this. So it does be aware that it does use quite a lot of, of thread. <clears throat> but I think it's worth it. Right, one more, one more, one more. I'm just going to dive through to the back. And there's my little eyelet. Squishing with my thumb. See? I'll finish that off and then we'll do a holy one, one with a hole. I'll finish all this off properly because when it's all absolutely filled up with all these stitch doodling, it probably will get used somewhere as something. Um, because, you know, even little things like this don't want to be wasted. I am going to get a new bit of thread because that won't last another, another round. Um, and then we'll make a little hole. So the first one I'll do is the um, the hole that goes all the way through and then I'll do one with a bit of cloth in behind and then I'll get my thread unknotted. I don't know if you can, well I don't know if you can hear the rain and or Stella who's my little dog snoring. <laughs> I'm not sure which is loudest. Oops. This thread's being naughty. Okay. It's always better when you're pulling embroidery thread, um, and I don't know if I've ever said it specifically, when you're pulling strands off the six-stranded embroidery cotton floss thread, whatever you call it, um, to pull them individually. Marion said it recently on Marion's World. Marion, I hope I didn't make you spill your tea saying your name again. Um, <laughs> and it sort of reminded me to point it out. If you try and pull off two or three at once you'll get in a big tangle. It, um, it's better to pull them off one at a time if you're not used to it and you don't know. Right. So now I'm going to make my knot ready and I'll get my little snippy scissors. Now you want really sharp small pointy scissors and um, I've got these <laughs> little fiskers. And I'm going to just make a snip. Where shall I do it? Doesn't really matter. Let's just go somewhere in here. So what I do is I just take a little fold where I want to snip, and then I snip. And my, I know the points aren't sharp, so that's why I'm doing it like that. And now I've got a hole, hopefully all the way through. Yes. And I'm going to try and do a teeny tiny one so it doesn't take forever. 
but in principle you could make you know the hole any size you want. There we go, mid hill. I don't know why I say hill like that. It's just a habit. A hill. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to in principle do exactly the same thing. Now because you've got two layers, what you could do as well, and maybe I'll do that. Um, or even if you don't have two layers, like when you're darning, do a little stabilizing stitch around the edge first. So just about two threads from the edge of the hole. Just take a little teeny tiny running stitch and that will hold those two layers together and just give you a little bit of a bit more substance to um, to stitch against you know to pull against when you're doing your overcasting. This is a bit of old linen trousers of my husband's it's a bit worn there so it is a bit fragile. Right, there we go. So you see I've just done those teeny tiny stitches around the hole. Actually that looks quite nice just on its own but this is about eyelet stitch so I will make an eyelet. The thing I'm going to do is just trim that tail back a bit because obviously there's a hole there so you don't want to see it on the front unless you do and then it's fine. So then I go in through the hole and then I come up and now I'm going to go clockwise because I'm right handed. And the same principle as before, I don't try and fill everything in, in on the first pass and all I need to make sure I do now is go beyond my little running stitches so they get hidden. And, just, and don't pull it too tight, just let the stitch just lay So I make my first pass around in the hole and up. Whoops, don't do that. <clears throat> and, and depending on what cloth you use, you might get little fray tufty bits poking out. If you've got really sharp small scissors, you can snip them off, but or you might find that they disappear behind your stitching, you know, they all get flattened down. But I don't worry about things like that. If that's what the cloth wants to do, then just let it smoosh again, thumb smoosh. I'm nearly back to the beginning. And then I'll go round again and fill in the gaps. And again, I'd like the look of very length to my stitch. So if I see that there's a little stitch, I'll take a bigger stitch next and vice versa. If there's a little stitch, I'll do a big stitch. You could just play with it. You know, you can do, you could go right out there with your stitch if you wanted to. And then you see that I've just laid the thread where I want it to go, like that. You can do that as well. Apparently I do that, I hadn't realised until that moment. It's kind of strange in a way, because you would, it's counterintuitive I think, I don't know, um, that it's very slow stitchy for me to make these videos. Um, you would think that it's, you know, I know a lot of people like to sit and stitch quietly without any distractions and that's absolutely fine and obviously I do that as well sometimes. But in making this, these videos and talking about what I'm doing at the same time and kind of, it's, it's like if, you, if you're teaching something you learn yourself at the same time or you learn about yourself, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm, I'm finding it, I'm very... I'm very much enjoying making these videos and I'm also finding that I'm learning things about myself, mostly things that I'm happy to know, <laughs> but it's all good. 
Exactly there, the two strands have separated slightly. You probably, can you see? So I'm just going to push them with my needle, that side and that side, and then I can get another stitch in between them. And obviously if you're going this way, if you're, if you're doing it with the hole, you can't say, oh, there's a gap over there and come up over there because that thread's going to show in the hole. So you can't jump too far ahead at one time, if you see what I mean. You have to kind of work your way round. So if you find you're coming round, you think for the last time and there are bigger gaps, make sure you fill them in. Because you can't jump across. I hope you understand what I mean. Because you don't want your, your thread to show, you know, crossing the hole. Like here, I've got quite big gaps, so I'm going to make sure they're all filled in this time. And I'll come back there and put in an extra one, I think, like so. And there's a lovely feeling to them as well. These, this is a true eyelet stitch. Um, the one on the surface and the, the one with the, the one I'm going to do in a minute with a little patch behind. They're kind of, I don't know, would you call them modified eyelet stitches? But this is as if it's an eyelet, you know, like the metal eyelets that you put into canvas or things like that. <clears throat> but I thought, you know, they're all a similar way of, of working, so let's stick them all in the same video. So there we go. I think just so then to finish off I just go down through the hole. Make sure that stitch is laying where I want it to. See I'm holding it on the back like that. And then as luck would have it I've ended where I started. And then just take a another little back stitch and then you can work your way through some of your your stitches on the back. And then trim off. And I'll show you. And there it is. Little eyelet. See my finger behind? So they're fun. So then the final one of the of the things, and I'll do it again just with the normal stitch, but remember in my stitch journal where I use different stitches, so I don't think you have to only use overcast stitch. Um, I don't know which piece to put in. Let's make a hole first. So this time I want to make a hole only in the top piece of the cloth. I'll go down here. So I'm sort of pulling it apart like that, so I've only got the top piece. Um, if, you only, if you're only working on one piece of cloth, you just make a hole right through and then um, put your patch behind. And um, because I'm working on a double layer, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to make a little nick. And I'm going to make a slightly bigger hole, I think. Not too big. All these little stitchy videos are supposed to be just... Um, I don't think I'll ever do what they call shorts. I don't think that's me. <laughs> but I do like these to be sort of under the half hour, just as a balance to those other hour-long plus rambles. So there I've got my hole. So all I need now is a bit of cloth that will fill the hole and a bit more. And it doesn't have to be round. So I'm just kind of judging how big it needs to be. I'm going to go for that. It's just an odd shape. And then you just want something to poke it in there with. What can I? Pokey tool, pokey tool. Excuse my scissors, sorry, not they're here. So you just need to poke it in. You can lift that up. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And fiddle about. It would obviously be easier if the cloth wasn't basted together and I could get in from the side somewhere. And then once it's in, you just want to make sure that it's well under all round like that. And um, am I going to use that same colour or am I going to change colour? It's just, we use the same colour, why not? It's on the needle. So I'm going to do the same thing again that I did before. I'm going to do a little running stitch around the edge just to anchor it a bit. Let's get those little scraps away. It just stabilises it and it also holds that extra little bit of cloth that I poked in there in place so it doesn't slide away from me. So 
Well, it'll soon be time to take the dogs out. I think I'm going to be getting wet. It's got that, the rain's got that kind of sound to it that it's set in for the night, you know. There's a certain sound that's here to stay for a little while at least. And again, you know, you could just do this. You don't have to go and do the over if you like the look of this so far. I suppose this is what I'm going to do now has got some relations to reverse applique. Applique, there you go, I said the word. Like I did in the, like we did in um, week, what was it, week two with the circle behind. Very similar. Okay, so I went down there, I'm going to come back up there. And I'm going to just do exactly the same thing again. And this time I'm going to just go into the, the piece of orange cloth that I put behind. So just off the edge, and I'm going to come up a little bit further round. And I'm going to go all the way around doing that. So just into the, just the very edge of the orange. Can you see the thread's a bit in the way? I'm just right at the edge. And then jumping over a little bit. Can you see? you can see. I couldn't see because the, the you know the stuff on the camera screen telling you how zoomed you are or not and all that stuff. Uh, but they won't be there when you're watching so hopefully if I've done it right. So I think you can see. Oops. I'm just going around making sure I'm covering those little stabilising running stitches but quite far apart on the first pass. You could also of course play with using different coloured threads. You could go around with one colour and then change colour. You could use variegated thread to get different effects. You could use, like I said, thicker or thinner threads. Be aware that the thinner the threads the longer it takes to fill in. You, could exp you can do different sizes of hole, um, different colours, like in my on my stitch journal page there. You could do different shaped holes, you could do you know more square holes or long thin holes, don't have to be some version of round. There's many many things you could do. You could eyelet stitch around the edge and then you could do some more stitching on it if you wanted to. Ouch, stab yourself with your needle. <laughs> don't do that. This thread's not going to be enough, I don't think. So I'm back to the beginning. I'm going to go around again. And fill in. Until my thread runs out and then I'm going to have to get some more. Maybe that other bit that I took off earlier will be enough. I get away with one more. You know that thing where you just think you can get away with one more and then you end up unthreading your needle. And then it's a heck of a job to thread it back on so you can anchor it. So I'm not going to risk it. And then you can just on the back, you know, tuck your Tuck your needle in somewhere and finish off, being careful not to go right through. A couple of back stitches. <clears throat> Is that going to be enough? No, I'm going to use the long bit. It'll always go in the aughts, the other bit. You could do a whole little sampler of um, eyelet stitching of all different kinds. You can include it in a piece about circles. I love circles. You'll see on here the circles from when we were doing couching. Um, so it's just another way of making circles if you wanted to do a, a kind of circle inspired piece. What I'm now doing is I'm peering through the little gap between my camera and my light. <laughs> 
the things I do for you. I, I like it. You're not making me do it, are you? Don't, don't, you know, don't feel sorry for me. I'm enjoying myself. I have apparently quite a strange sense of humour. Um, well, apparently I do. Sometimes I say things and I think um, those of you who don't sort of know that Northern English humour might think I'm, I'm being serious when I'm not. It's that kind of um, putting yourself down kind of humour. I don't know how to explain it. I know my um, husband, who's Dutch, when we were first together, had, had trouble with it. And also with the, the teasing. There's a, there's a kind of thing where you, you only, in the, in well, probably in loads of places in the world, but from my frame of reference, in the north of England, you only tease people if you if you really like them. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, well, that's kind of the opposite of what it should be. If you really like somebody, you shouldn't be mean. I nearly said entre guillemets, that's French. Um, what do you call it? Oh, um, in inverted commas, that's the word. Thank you, brain. You know, you shouldn't be mean in inverted commas to people that you that you like, but I think the thinking is in the north of England that if you really like someone... And it's a safe space to tease. And I don't mean being really mean, you know, it's just that sort of gentle teasing. And yeah, um, Hans, my husband, had a lot of trouble with that when we were first together because he thought I meant it. <laughs> He's used to me now after, gosh, 20 years, it'll be in March. It's... So... I'm talking about other things because it's taking quite a while and I, I don't I don't dare stop and say well you get the idea because some of you will shout at me and then I'll cry now that's what I mean you see I, I won't really cry I am joking <laughs> but I know you know some of you like to see the actual finished thing and not just let me go well I've shown you now that's it goodbye so I will do just that and we're only at 32 minutes and 47 seconds, so we're not, you know, not that I'm against a clock. It's not half an hour, strictly. I just don't want to. I just like these to be, you know. So I like I like there to be something for everyone. So those of you who like the long wittering on for hours and hours and weeks and months that it took me to take that, make that borrow-inspired journal, many of you like that, but I'm guessing there might be people too who just want a quick 20 minutes cup of coffee and something to watch and so some people have said and I get that as well that they like longer videos because otherwise you have to if you're if you're doing something at the same time knitting or stitching or whatever and you you every time the video finishes unless you put in a whole playlist or something you have to go and find another video um, so anyway <laughs> I'm trying to do a mixture and I am liking this pink with that orange because the pink has got a peachy tone to it. And it's working quite nicely together. And um, I was a bit slapdash there. Slapdash is a word that is apparently known in the English speaking world. We had a discussion of it under another video about it. Um, but only by those of us who have been around the sun a few times. Um, I must ask my daughter. Well, my daughter's friends are all French, so they won't say it. They'll say the French equivalent. Um, I must ask an English friend with a, a young daughter or son if it's still in use among the youth. The youth of today. Do they still say slapdash in England? I think maybe two more and we're there. One, oops, catching on my little couchy thing over there. Two more, yeah. There we go. Make sure it's laying where I want, give it a smoosh. There it is. So there we've got a, a true eyelet with a little hole in the cloth. There we've got a, a 
don't even want to call it a false eyelet, but you know, on the surface of the cloth. And there we've got another eyelet with a different colour of cloth behind it. So that is the eyelet stitch. So I hope you liked that and you will have a go with it in your own stitching work. And thank you very much for watching and I look forward to you joining me next time for more cloth tales. Bye bye!